Hey guys, it's Leanna and I'm here today with a book haul. <laughs> These books are so heavy. Oh no, this isn't even all of them. Yeah, I've been meaning to film a haul for a while and then I kept being like, well, I know this one other book is coming so I may as well wait. And I was like, okay, well I've waited this long. I know this one other book is coming so I may as well wait. Waited long enough time to do the haul. So I'm just gonna start with this deck because it's the most precarious. <laughs> Good plan. Some of these books are books that I bought for myself. Some of these are books that other people gave to me for Christmas. Some of them are books that people gave me randomly. Um, I think that's every category. Yes, I bought it for myself. It was a, a Christmas present or a random present. You know what a book haul is, let's get started. First book I have is The Girl Who Loved Tom Gordon. Um, my friend Shaya gave me this. Shaya, whenever I haul Stephen King books or graphic novels, Oh fuck, there's a graphic novel that Shea gave me over there. Not in any of these stacks. Well, we'll just do that last, won't we? Yeah, pretty much with very few exceptions. If I'm hauling a Stephen King book, so a few have bought myself, but most of the time if I'm hauling Stephen King or a graphic novel, it's from Shea. So Shea gave me this because she had an extra copy. I was with her actually when she bought the pop-up book version of this. And so she didn't really especially want to keep. Oh my God, why do I look like a ghost now? The sun was just perfect when I set this up. Why? Why? I know if I close the blinds, there's like a bunch of clouds in the sky. It's gonna go behind a cloud and then it'll be too dark. Ugh. Okay, well, yeah, I was hoping for the best. Okay, so back to this. Yeah, so she has the pop-up book version of this. So she didn't especially need to or want to keep this like mass market paperback. She was like, you want it? And I was like, sure. <laughs> Why the fuck not? I don't actually know what this is about really at all. Other than like what I gleaned from flipping through the pop-up book with her in the store. So... It's a, it's a book by Stephen King that I see the words Boston Red Sox on the on the back. That's that's all I know about this. Very useful, I know. Next is the book that me and Amanda are reading next month. Uh, well, I say next month. I don't know when this video is going up, but we're reading it in February for our book club pick. So for all I know, I've already posted a TBR and you already know that. I don't exactly know. Any whoosies. Yeah, so this is Amanda's pick. The live show will be on her channel. And Mara and Bethany are also reading with us. That being Bethany from Beautifully Bookish Bethany and Mara from Books Like Wah. This is a chunky fantasy romance that they are making me read <laughs> for reasons that remain a mystery to me. <laughs> I think this won like Goodreads Choice Awards or something. So Amanda really wanted to read it and she's hopeful that I will like it. I am less hopeful that I will like it, but stranger things have happened. It is definitely long, so I'm really hoping I like it because this is a long time to suffer if I hate it. I, I'm not gonna lie, I do really like the cover. Like the first time I saw this cover and I didn't know who this author was or what this was, I was like, ooh, is that a Grimdark Fantasy? It's like red and has a blade on it. And then I'll, I found out vaguely what it was and I was like, oh, just kidding. It's definitely not a Grimdark Fantasy. I mean, I have been known to like a trashy book or two. So this could be another Infernal Devices Shatter Me situation. Those are few and far between, but here's hoping. Next is my pick for January, which is The Black Company. I accidentally got the omnibus version. So it's all three books in The Black Company in one bind up. But in January, as of the filming of this video, I haven't started it yet, me and Amanda, and we'll be reading the first book in The Black Company, which is called The Black Company. And that book is, enjoy my flipping noises. Oh, for the love of fuck. Wait, did I pass it? Yeah, that was way too far. It's actually a lot shorter than that. So this is the first book. It's in the bind up version. It's le it's less than 300 pages. The bind up version is bigger. Like the pages are, are bigger. <laughs> I think in the mass market, it's like 300 pages. Yeah, so it's, it's not terribly long. So I can knock this out pretty quickly. Hopefully I like it enough to want to read the rest because I've got it and I do enjoy a flippity floppity paperback so excited about that at least. Next is another book Shea gave me and that's In the Gar in the Night Garden uh, by Catherine M. Valenti. I really like Catherine Valenti's writing in Deathless. I don't think I've read anything else by Catherine Valenti. I don't think so. I own Radiance. Not to be confused with Grace Draven's Radiance. When I talk about loving Radiance, I mean Grace Draven's Radiance. And oh, and I own all of the books in the 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 girl who circ circumnavigated Fairyland in a ship of her own making. I, I think the series might be called Fairyland. I don't know. I own all those books, but I haven't read them. So yeah, I think the only Catherine Valente book I've read is Deathless. And I really liked Deathless. Um, so Shea read this and really liked it, I think. I don't think she loved it, but she liked it. And um, it's illustrated, these beautiful illustrations. So since this looks kind of fairy tale esque which is kind of how Deathless is, uh, unlike Radiance, which is a sci-fi book. So I don't know how I'll do with that. But so I've seen her write fairy tale esque things and enjoyed it. 
and these illustrations are so pretty. So I'm quite excited about this. Uh, next up, I'll, I'll do these together. I have two Brandon Sanderson books that I bought myself. Um, I already owned in these editions, the hardcovers of uh, The Well of Ascension and The Hero of Ages. Hero of Ages being the one that uh, kind of lost me. But I'm a completionist both in reading and in owning. So since I have those other two, it just has been bothering me that I don't have the first one. The reason I only have those other two is because I got them off like book outlet or something. It was like, you know, they had like one copy in and I was like, get it. And then since then I've like parted ways with book outlet. Not that I was ever affiliated with them, but like I won't shop there anymore. So they might've had this since then, I don't know. But there was no reason to wait anymore because I wasn't like waiting for it to hopefully also be on book outlet for a cheap price. So I was just like, oh, fuck it, get it. <laughs> <laughs> just do it. So I got my hardcover Mistborn to complete my hardcover, American hardcover uh, Mistborn trilogy set. <laughs> and then I'm reading Elantris in this month, with this being January. Again, I'm not sure where this video is going up. <laughs> so I have not read it yet as of the filming of this video, but that's why I got it because I was going to read it in January. So I was like, I need to have a copy of it. <laughs> in order to do that. And um, I always get a hardcover if I can, if it's not like exorbitant. That's the story of this purchase. Next I have Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor. Why is there a bookmark here? Uh, this came, I bought the special edition of Luma Crate that was specifically Daughter of Smoke and Bone slash generally Lainey Taylor themed. Although the crate itself, like they intentionally said, you know, oh, it's not going to be just Daughter of Smoke and Bone. It's going to be like the book will be, but it's going to be all Lainey Taylor things. Except everything in the box was Daughter of Smoke and Bone related, except for one thing. And that one thing was Strange the Dreamer. And it was a mug. And I was like, if it had been like a balance where like it was kind of half and half, I'd be like, whatever. But I was like, why couldn't I have a Daughter of Smoke and Bone mug? Why did that one thing have to be Strange the Dreamer? Everything else was Daughter of Smoke and Bone. Anyway, that's a petty thing to complain about. The mug is quite nice. And I do love Strange the Dreamer. Anyway, um, I've been bitching for years that Daughter of Smoke and Bone deserves the kind of like glorious special editions that all the, it seems that all new YA releases seem to be getting. And like it came out before that was a thing. And I've just been pissing and moaning about it. So when Illumicrate Crate announced this, I was like, fucking finally. <laughs> So of course I had to get it. I mean, the stuff in the crate was fine, but I was in it for the book. And I like, I would pay that amount of money just for the book. So like having extra stuff as well was quite nice. And I've ordered the, because they then separately sold books two and three, which is such a ploy, but whatever. I've ordered those, they're not here yet. But these editions, they're all, they all have sprayed pages. They all are hardcover because you can get this cover now. They re-released it um, in these covers in the UK, I think, by, I think Hotter is the publisher, maybe Simon and Schuster, I don't know. But you can only get it in hardcover from Illuma Creek. Uh, with sprayed edges and the dust jackets are all illustrated by Lainey Taylor's husband, Jim DeBartolo. And the like naked cover has like a quote on it. So it, I mean, it's quite deluxe. <laughs> and I love Daughter Smoke and Bone. The, the international edition, which I also own, is the only blurbed review on it is from Patrick Rothfuss. And the review just says, I wish I'd written this book. <laughs> which like, can you get a better accolade than that? I don't think so. Anyway, yeah, so I've read this. I love it. And I just, and now I have this fancy fucking edition of it. I'll do these next four together. I have another set of four Book of the Month Club books also. Then I'll do separately because they're in a different stack. But yeah, these are all Book of the Month Club books. <laughs> I didn't get them all at once because you can only, except the, uh, the other stack of four, I did get all at once because it's the end of the year and the end of the year, in addition to your usual one book of the month and two, two add-ons, you also get to pick, if you want to, one of the best of the year, if you want. So I got four books in December. So that's, that's coming up. Sneak preview. But these came in separate boxes. I don't remember which came with which. Yeah, I don't remember at all. But what I do know is that Hibbity. this was actually a month, like a, a monthly pick, like one of the books of the month when I got it. Um, and it is a YA fantasy Asian inspired retelling of Romeo and Juliet, hence the title, which is a quote from Romeo and Juliet. It looks like it was in November. So that's when I got it. The other ones were all add-ons. So because they could be from any time, I don't know which box they came in. So yeah, YA has generally kind of fallen out of favor with me a lot because in recent months and years, it has quite often, more often than not let me down. But I couldn't resist a Shakespeare retelling with this cover. <laughs> And it was like one of the books of the month and I had to pick one and it was the one that most appealed to me. So well, I didn't have to pick one. You can skip, but I like, I never, I almost never skip because I'm like, but I want books. Also, you can't get add-ons if you skip. So generally I, I don't skip because I want the add-on. Anyway, I haven't read this yet. It intrigues me. I haven't heard too much about it. I've just seen it around, but I don't I actually haven't heard anyone say they've read it and what they think of it. So I don't know. Maybe people are hating it. I have no fucking idea. And then these three were all add-ons. They're all 
uh, like mystery thrillers. So I got two by Ruth Ware, one by one and turn of the key. One by one I got because it's an isolated close circle mystery in, in the snow. And it just, it sounded very like, and then there were none, which is one of my favorites. And this I learned, oh God, why is everything falling? Okay. This I learned is inspired by, based on, or in some way a retelling of The Turn of the Screw, which I read Turn of the Screw in 2020. Didn't love it that much, but I love The Haunting of Bly Manor, which is a retelling of The Turn of the Screw. So like I've become more, it intrigues me more now that I see something as in some way a reference to inspired by or a retelling of The Turn of the Screw. So that's why I got this, because I heard good things about it and I was like, ooh, Turn of the Screw. And then this one, The Broken Girls by Simone St. James, I think is an isolated closed circle mystery in a girl's boarding school, which sounds like a fun read. And by fun, I mean chilling. Uh, anyway, they all sounded intriguing. Hence me choosing them. Next I have, oh, these are all gifts. Okay, this, Bethany got me this for Christmas. Uh, it's Hansel and Gretel um, the, retold by Neil Gaiman with art by Lorenzo Mat Matoti. It's got this like little window in it. Why can't I flip pages? It's quite nicely illustrated, quite darkly illustrated as is appropriate with Neil Gaiman, if you don't know because you've been in a rock. Neil Gaiman's my favorite author. So Bethany literally had me photograph every Neil Gaiman book that I own so she could make sure that I didn't have this before she got it. <laughs> uh, which is very wise because I do own quite a bit. So the odds of me already having the thing you're thinking of getting me are quite high. And then Shea got me, these are still wrapped in their plastic, which yeah, volumes one and two of the Neil Gaiman library. Um, she was like, I knew you wouldn't buy these for yourself. And I was like, you're right, I wouldn't, but I'm excited to own them. These are like bind ups of like some Dark Horse comics done by Neil Gaiman. So the first one, uh, volume one has, some of these I've actually bought for Shea as gifts. <laughs> A Study in Emerald, Murder Mysteries, How to Talk to Girls at Parties and Forbidden Brides. And volume two has The Facts in the Case of the Departure of Miss Finch. I got that for Shea. Likely Stories, Harlequin Valentine and Trollbridge. So I am quite excited to have these. I would never splurge on comics, but. I'm I'm quite excited about this. And these are heavy as fuck. This is the recent purchase, The City of Girls, uh, or just City of Girls, no, the by Elizabeth Gilbert, because this is one of Jashana's favorite books. And she was just going on and on about why she loves it. And the more she talked about it, the more I was like, that does sound something I would like. Because I heard it before, I think Jashana, but I think maybe other people too compare it to the the Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. And I really liked that book, but I liked it kind of despite the premise, the premise of a Hollywood starlet telling her life story. I was like, when I read that book, I was like, I don't expect to like this because this premise doesn't appeal to me. And yet it was so well written that like, I loved it anyway. So hearing that another story is similar to that one, I was like, well, it wasn't really the story that that got me on that one. It was the writing. But when she explained it and kind of went over all the ways it's different from it, I was like, oh, that sounds way more up my alley. Because it's like uh, a large portion of it takes place like in a physical like theater, I think in New York. And it just, I, I quite like the atmosphere of a theater more so than Hollywood. So that as a setting appeals to me way more. So I'm, and I know Jashana just like loves the fuck out of it. So I feel like the odds of me hating this are slim. I feel like at worst, I'll just kind of be lukewarm on it. But yeah, I figured I'd give it a go. Then Gardens of the Moon by Steven Erickson. This is on my list of series to read in 2021. I will be buddy reading this with my father. I got it for him for Christmas and told him that was why. <laughs> he was like, all right, let's do it. So that's the plan in February that he and I will read this. I am moving. So that's thrown a hitch into like, because I know that will take time away from reading, but that's the plan is that we're going to buddy read this. So that's why I own it because I need to own it in order to accomplish that. Next is the next book in the All Souls trilogy. I read Discovery of Witches and I was kind of lukewarm on Discovery of Witches. However, the way that it ends, um, I am, I know like where the next book will be taking place and the where highly intrigues me and highly appeals to me. So despite not really loving Discovery of Witches, the setting of this book entices the fuck out of me. So like I decided to go ahead and give the second book a go. And then if I, I feel just as lukewarm about this as I did about the first book, then I probably won't read the third one. But I'm, I'm a complete sucker for the setting. That, and I can't tell you the setting because it's spoilery for the first book. So the way the first book ends, if you've read the first book, you absolutely know where the next book will be taking place. I'm quite excited about it. Next is a gift uh, from a friend of mine who's not on booktube and... <laughs> She's like, I'm quite bad at buying presents. So can you just give me a list of books that you want? And then it'll be kind of a surprise <laughs> what you get. 
And I was like, sure. Um, so I told her I want, I was interested in Stephen, among the others that I said, I was interested in Stephen Fry's uh, retellings of the Greek, uh, Greek myth. So she got me Heroes by Stephen Fry. Um, I also need to get Mythos because I think Mythos is first. But like, what? This book is so fucking gorgeous. Like, and it's really heavy. As I, th I think it's illustrated and it's just like on really thick paper. It's just a gorgeous book. This is like totally, totally, totally a coffee table book. <laughs> So like, it's it's kind of like epic to hold. I don't, I mean, I feel like reading it will feel like intimidating because I'm just like, oh, just like holding this. I feel like I should be at the Huntington Library. <laughs> but uh, I think the audiobook is read by Stephen Fry. So that all quite appeals to me. So I might do it via audio. But I mean, I always like to own the physical book of any audiobook that I do experience. Um, then I got for myself the My Cousin Rachel because uh, I want to read more Daphne du Maurier. I do own two other, or well, I read Rebecca and then I own two other Daphne du Maurier books. Uh, those being Frenchman's Creek and Jamaica Inn, which I do want to read, but I was wanting to read this next because I want to see the movie of this. And it's the one that I didn't own. Well, I shouldn't say the one that I don't own because I don't own every Daphne du Maurier book. But so I went ahead and got it so that I could do that. That's why we all buy books, right? To read them. And then this is another present from Shea. <laughs> Um, I think this was a just because present. Maybe it was a Christmas present. I don't know. We got each other shit all the time. So like, I don't remember the occasion or if there was one. She got me the pop-up edition of The Little Prince. And I know she loves The Little Prince. So I suspect I also will love The Little Prince. Everything I've heard about it. Most people I feel like who read it love it and it breaks their heart. And this, a pop-up edition, like how fun is that? It's still in its plastic because I haven't. Okay, well, let, let's check it out together. Ugh. Such a cute book. All right, let's see the pop-ups. Let's do this thing. Oh, so cute. Where's the next pop-up? Aw. Ooh, that one moves. I don't know if you can see it, probably not. Very cute. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Now that's a pop-up. Wow, 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 wow. Okay, yeah, so I'm super excited about this. <laughs> so thank you to Shaya. Next stack. This is Book of the Month Club Books and One Other. So the one other is Nosferatu by Joe Hill, which is on my January TBR, but at the time of filming that TBR and for half of January, well, not half of January, because I'm not halfway through January right now as of the filming of this video, but it took quite a fucking long time for this book to get here. It finally did. And I actually have read this already. So I will be filming a review and me and Shay will be discussing it because this is the book, uh, one of the two books that me and Shay are buddy reading because we're reading each other's picks. She picked Nosferatu. So she's rereading it and I'm reading it. And I picked The Wolf. So I'm rereading it and she's reading it. So Nosferatu by Joe Hill. Do I need to explain what this is? I feel like it's pretty well known. <laughs> Joe Hill is Stephen King's son. People often say that this book is quite in the style of Stephen King. I am not an expert on Stephen King by any stretch, but from the experiences I have had with Stephen King, I would say this feels like if you like if I didn't know who wrote this and you said Stephen King did, I'd be like, yeah, that checks out. So yeah, it's about uh, this like vampiric type being uh, that ferries children in his car with the license plate Nosferatu to, to Christmas land. Uh, so it's just a real happy little fairy tale, <laughs> as you can tell from the cover. <laughs> now all my end of year book of the month club books again. So the, the my pick for the month. My two add-ons and then one of the best of the year picks. I think I remember which is which. Pretty sure I remember which is which. Outlawed is my book of the month uh, pick. And it is, I would just get, is this January, not December? I don't know. I think they do it in January so that you can include December in the best of. I don't fucking know. Anyway, I picked Outlawed because I, I wasn't super keen on any of the picks this month, but this one somewhat appealed to me and I think Shaya picked it too. So whenever like we can't decide, we just go with whatever the other one picked. It seemed quite feminist and like I'm, I'm very hit or miss on Westerns, but I'm willing to give it a go. I'm not gonna lie. Half the reason I didn't want to pick this is because I hate this cover so much. I can't even tell you how much I hate this cover. It's, it's the worst. <laughs> I could not think of a cover that l appeals to me less, but you know. That's, that's a terrible reason not to read something. Also, it was really fucking short, which I had no way of knowing before it arrived. Pulled it out of the box and I was like, is that it? And the text isn't very small. So I should be able to knock this out in no time. Next uh, is one of my, is my pick for like one of the best ofs. And that was Anxious People by Friedrich Bachmann. Um, I'd seen this around, but I had never really been interested. But I then read the synopsis because I was trying to pick which of the best ofs I would want. 
So I actually like actually looked into what it is and it, it sounded, now I don't remember. Oh, it's would be bank robbers and they're anxious about it. And it, it just sounded like a very strange, almost gallows humor comedy of errors that I've heard that his writing is just like excellent. Uh, and I, it sounds quite character driven. So it sounded like something that very possibly could be up my alley, um, given that in 2020, I was reading more contemporaries and uh, things like Normal People and The Hearts Invisible Furies and Beach Read, quite lit -y contemporaries. And I, I liked those. So I, I thought this might be a win with me, especially if it was one of the best of the year, like how bad could it be? <laughs> and then my add-ons, I got A Rogue of One's Own by Evie Dunmore. I really did not like Bringing Down the Duke, uh, which was her first in this series but as I've come to learn romance novel series are kind of more spin-offs where like it's like a group of friends or a family and then there's kind of a book for each one so this is a sequel in that way so I wasn't gonna read this but I talked to a friend of mine who read both and she liked bringing down the duke but I was like you know what my issues were uh war were with bringing down the duke do you think I would like a rogue of one's own better and she was like actually yeah she was like I I didn't that she, she didn't have a problem with bringing down the duke bringing down the duke but having read both like she knows what things in bringing down the duke were there and she doesn't disagree that they were there they just didn't bother her so she's like i can safely say that rogue of one's own does not have those things <laughs> and you'd probably like it better so i was like all right because i the in bringing down the duke the writing style like i i i liked it i didn't hate it there was just more like specific elements to the romance that like really put me off but because the style of the writing was like you know quite amusing and fun and i do love me a tessa dare style bridgerton style <laughs> a uh, fun historical romance with like a lot of witty banter. I was like, all right, let's give it a shot. And then Early Riser, this sounded strange and I also don't remember what it's about, but I remember thinking, actually that sounds great. Every winter, the human population hibernates. During those bitterly cold four months, the nation is a snow draped landscape of desolate loneliness devoid of human activity. Well, not quite. Your name is Charlotte Worthing, and it's your first season with the Winter Consuls, the committed but mildly unhinged group of misfits who are responsible for ensuring the hibernatory safe passage of the sleeping masses. You are investigating an outbreak of viral dreams that you dismiss as nonsense. Nothing more than a quirky artifact born of the sleeping mind. When the dreams start to kill people, it's unsettling. When you get the dreams too, it's weird. When they start to come true, you begin to doubt your sanity. But teasing the truth from the winter is never easy. You have to avoid the villains and their penchant for murder, kidnapping, and stamp collecting. Ensure you aren't eaten by night walkers, those whose thirst for human flesh can only be satisfied by comfort food, and sidestep the increasingly less than mythical winter volk. But so long as you remember to wrap up warmly, you'll be fine. So that sounds really weird. Really, really weird. But also, as I read that description online when I ordered it and like some of the like book of the month reviews, I was like, yeah, okay. That I feel like I could definitely vibe with this. <laughs> okay, and last but certainly not least is this entire stack of Robin Hobb books because I've decided I quite like Robin Hobb. Ooh. Um, so I've, I only just, as of last night, finished Royal Assassin, which is the second book in the Farseer trilogy. But like, even having not finished it, I was like, I, Robin Hobb is the, is an author for me. I already know this. So I decided to just go ahead and get like, with my Christmas bonus, all of the Hobb books. So I, and I stacked them in order. So this is the Live Ship Trader series, which is on my list of series that if I can, my list of series to finish this year included Farseer, and my list of series to start this year included Live Ship Traders, which I kept calling Mad Ship. And Mad Ship is one of the books in the series, but I, like in four videos, I think, I referred to this series as the Mad Ship series. I don't know what madness possessed me. <laughs> See what I did there? Any whoosies. Ship of Magic is the first book, followed by Mad Ship, concluding with Ship of Destiny. These covers are it. My favorite covers are of the final three and you'll see why. They are objectively, without question, the prettiest covers. Uh, but anywho, uh, next is the, the Tawny Man trilogy, um, which begins with Fool's Errand, then The Golden Fool, and then Fool's Fate. Like those covers are totally fine. And then the final trilogy, which is like definitely the best covers. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Uh, and that's the Fits and the Fool trilogy. Um, and they're just, they're quite shiny. <laughs> and especially the third book, which is Teal. Gotta love Teal. Um, so Fool's Assassin, Fool's Quest, and the best cover of all, Assassin's Fate. Just, just look at this fucking cover. Like, like yum. So yeah, that does it. I is oh wait graphic novel. I did this last time where I said I'd haul something at the end and forgot. Whew. Okay, I think in uh, my December wrap up you saw Shaya give me this. Um, she read uh, I Hate Fairyland a bind up I think of the first two volumes and uh, she gave me the first volume. 
of I Hate Fairyland, which apparently is, oh my god, just look, look at that. <laughs> apparently the premise of this is that, um, it's basically like this girl who like falls into fairyland a la like Alice in Wonderland or whatever. And like the like fairy creatures or whatever are like to leave fairyland and return to your own realm. You have to like perform, you have to like go on this quest and it should take like a day. And uh, 27 years later, <laughs> she's still trying to fulfill this stupid quest. It's not going well. Um, and it's blurbed actually by Neil Gaiman. It says a candy colored and vicious delight and always dangerously funny. So based on Shay's description and based on what I have like seen just kind of flipping through this, I mean, it looks like complete madness, but also like it'd be quite fun. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of like each color is just like a Crayola box, just like vomited everywhere. So it's going to be intense. I might have to like wear sunglasses while I read this. <laughs> all right. Yeah. So those are all the books. There may be some books that I acquired since my last haul that like it's like right after that haul. So it's been so long that I've already like TBR'd and wrapped them up and forgot that I never hauled them. So sorry if that's the case. My bad. Oh, I already see over there. There's one. Uh, do I go get yeah, I'll fucking go get it. Last, last, last is uh, Infernal, The Chronicles of Stratus, book one by Mark D. Yeager. Um, this was sent to me by the publisher and I need to read it. Okay, for realsies, that's it. Let me know in the comments down below if you've read any of these books, if you want to read these books, if you recommend these books, if you are dreading me reading these books, whatever you want to let me know. I post videos on Saturdays, other random times as well, but definitely Saturdays. So like and subscribe and I'll see you when I see you. Bye.